Palace of Justice was the only large courthouse that had survived the Allied bombing raids. On Nuremberg's Palace of Justice converged the trial's massive cast of characters, judges, lawyers, interpreters, translators, and in the adjoining prison block, well guarded, the principals themselves. When we got to Nuremberg, uh, I don't know why, but there was like 15 of us that got dropped off at the Palace of Justice and we brought into an old schoolhouse where we were billeted and we went to work with the engineers helping them. Apparently they were shorthanded and that's how I got to run the photostat machine and these captured documents and pictures. I spent a lot of time reading them and I was sorry to say I could have made copies for myself. They would have come in handy today really, you know, but uh, never thinking. Uh, well, never thinking that I would even live this long. <laughs> and uh, we left, uh, let's see, we worked a second shift, and when that was done, then we went back to the, uh, the division, which was based in South Nuremberg. And from there, we, we were all pulling guard in the cell block. And uh, I moved up from the cell block to sergeant of the guard and into the courtroom and sergeant of the guard there and the whole thing. So it was, it was quite an experience for me. Now that I think of it, you know what I mean? Sure. At that time, I, I wanted to get the heck out of there. I just wanted to go home. You walk into the prison and what did they tell you your role was going to be? Actually, at that point, I was a, uh, an acting buck sergeant, so I had to pull guard on the cell. Okay. And uh, you know, the <laughs> talk about something that's really tiresome and disgusting, stand there and watch somebody sleep or whatever he was doing at night and you know, in the daytime, of course, they were reading or, or sometimes they get up into the courtroom and you had nothing to do, but uh, that was very disgusting to me. I, I just couldn't see doing what I was doing, really. It's like watching paint dry, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, that progressed into every all the guards feelings there and they were always trying to antagonize these guard the uh, mm. defendants you know you probably read about the um the night that i was sergeant of the guard um there was some screaming down in the cell uh, the, the wing and i went down there and the, the uh, one of the guards had fashioned a little man out of a piece of paper and he had a string wrapped around the neck of the thing and we had the light right there and he was swinging that no, <laughs> light. No. This was on Julius Stryker's cell, um, and it was, you know, it was shown on the wall. I, he must have woke him up or something. And this, you know, and uh, it was Julius Stryker's uh, screaming. But uh, you know, I told him to knock it off. But I really didn't care. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> there was a wooden door, mm -hmm. and um, they had a cut out there with hinge. It was hinged, and it dropped down. Uh. And you had look through an area probably like that, you know. Um, and uh, the light was right here, and you watched him, but uh, the guys really didn't watch him. The guy's snoring. What the heck are you going to do? Are you going to watch him, listen to him snore? <laughs> Another thing they used to do was uh, they, around Germany, of course, their monetary system was defunct, and you pick up these pfennigs, which is a penny, mm -hmm. and they're probably about as big as our half dollar, and the guys are, they roll these down the, the corridor. There are terraza floor. Yeah. It sounded like a freight train coming down there. I, I'm surprised these guys could, when they get up in the courtroom, <laughs> that they could keep their eyes open. <laughs> I don't think many of them slept, you know. <laughs> At one point, you went from guarding the cells to the sergeant of the cell block. Yes. My duty there wasn't really very much, much, uh, mainly to watch my own guys. That was about it. And we were attentive to make these guys make sure that you're watching these guys. The cell block, <clears throat> Uh, the door was in the middle, okay, and oh, I, I can't give you the dimensions of it, but in the right-hand corner, there was the toilet, mm -hmm. and uh, it was kind of like built into the corner there. If there was someone sitting on the toilet, you could not see him only for his legs, right. and uh, you know, being at that angle, and you're back here, so... It was difficult, really, to keep an eye on him doing something. There were pipes in back, so he apparently, from what we were told, uh, with cloth or something, he uh, 
tied it on to the pipes in the back and then just kind of slumped down. He must have choked to death. That's, I mean, uh, he was asphyxiated actually. And the, the guard that was there um, never noticed anything. So, you know, if you saw a guy sitting there for quite a long time, you'd open the door and peek, peek at him, you know, so. Kaltenbrunner, now he was one, uh, I even forget his position, but, but he was a mean bugger, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you couldn't, he would even look at you and kind of stare you down. Never spoke to him, he never spoke to me. I don't think anybody did, but everybody was kind of afraid of him. They always kept their eyes on him, really. Carlton Bruner, I don't think I would want Matt mad at me. He just gave me that impression that he was a mean. scar? Yes. Oh, yeah. I often wondered how he got that, mm -hmm. you know. Stryker was a complainer. <laughs> he made a lot of noise and, uh, you know, and, uh, of course, when you find out what he, what he was like as far as pornography was concerned, you, you hated him anyway, you know. Uh, Donetz was, uh, he spoke pretty good English also. If you, had, if you had to say something to him, he answered you civilly. There was nobody that was really um, way out. Yodo, um, you didn't get close to him either. He was strictly a, a Russian, so I mean, a, uh, I guess he was with a Prussian soldier, really. He was good. He even walked uh, with a click, 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 click like that. When we used to bring them upstairs to, uh, to have their lunch, um, they would get up and get a, do a little, have a little exercise, and he used to march, really. He, him and, him and Keitel. Keitel was kind of like, a, oh, a pansy, but boy, he was, a, he was strict on, um, you know, respecting his, his elders. And uh, there was the incident where, uh, he wouldn't get on the elevator because he wanted Gehring. Gehring to get on first, you know, and I just wanted to get out of there. You know, I tried to get him to come in. Somebody was in, else was in there, and he was going to let Gehring go first. And, I, and Gehring was trying to get by everybody else there, trying to get up, you know, and I, I pulled Keitel in, you know, and he, he said, Ach, the Rice Marshal, you know? I said, Baloney to the, I didn't say it that way, Baloney to the, to the Rice Marshal, get in here. <laughs> and uh, I closed the elevator and brought him back down. At all times, we had two German speaking guards, and they weren't allowed to speak to the defendants in German, uh, but they would pick up stuff that they were saying. And then they used to bring it back to uh, Captain Gilbert. Ah. Yeah, that was his orders. We did take some orders from Captain Gilbert also. Well, at some point you're asked to go upstairs, to, to, to leave your cell block and uh, the fact of which you were a, a sergeant there. Was that, that was deemed a promotion? More or less, more or less, because uh, uh, it was boring down in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the, in the cell wing, you know. But the reality is, there's very few people who can say they were that close to the defendants. And as you're standing there at parade rest, were you interested? Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, when I was on the uh, witness stand, that was the best place because uh, you could actually hear uh, Justice Jackson generally interrogating the prisoner uh, on the witness stand. We were standing probably 10 feet from the uh, American translators so we could hear the German German being translated to a answer to Justice Jackson's uh, question um, some of them like uh, von Schirach right there he spoke good English so that was great it was very interesting and I found myself too uh, when something was going on like that and I got relieved I'd run out and sit in the visitors section just to hear it you know after every recess <clears throat> uh, one of my duties was to stand right at the corner of the docket where Herman the Germans uh, sat and I stood stood there at parade rest you know mm -hmm. and you were you know you were just a fixture uh, it, it made it look nice you know and uh, invariably he would say to me Wasser bitte water please okay so that meant I had to go down to the Lister bag which was heavily chlorinated of course and uh, I'd get a paper cup and bring it to him, you know, and he, he'd taste it. Yeah. He'd say, bah, Americanish, and he'd hand it back to me. Now, that meant I had to take another walk down to the, get rid of the water and get rid of the cup, you know. 
I, I decided I was sick of that, you That's know. Good. So uh, I decided, gee, I'll take a walk. I'll go get the paper cup and I'll go down to the bathroom and I'll scoop out a scoop out of the toilet. Now it was flushed, yeah. okay. <laughs> but in my idea, I got him anyway. Yeah, I, fl I gave, brought him the water and he drank it and he tasted that. It was pretty good. He <laughs> says, yeah. He says, good wasser. <laughs> I said, I got you, babe. <laughs> uh, well, there was one exchange there between Von Schirach and uh, Justice Jackson. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Justice Jackson, he, even though he had a mic, he, you could hear him. Right. He was loud, believe me. And uh, quite an exchange going on between uh, Von Schirach, who spoke, again, like I said, perfect English, and they were more or less arguing back and forth like that, you know. And uh, of course, we heard of all of it. And uh, uh, they called the recess. And of course, we could relax at that time. Von Schirach turned to me and he said, but our Hitler youth was nothing more than your Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. Well, I says, you know, they, you know, I don't remember my exact word. I fought the Hitler youth. And I says, they, they uh, were vicious, really. And I says, and our Boy Scouts weren't taught to use weapons. He turned to me, he turned away from me, never said a word. And you know, he never even looked at me again. Every time he came in the elevator, if our eyes met, he'd put his head down. What's it all mean today? Well, uh, that's a question I've never had to answer. <laughs> <laughs> never thought about it, really. Well, good. Uh, I think I could start off by saying it's a good thing. It's a very good thing, really, because I think the world should know this, just in case it could possibly happen again. Um, golly, that's about all I can say, say about it, Greg. Um, it's, it's not a big showy thing. It's, a, it's history, and it's true history, and therefore it should have quite an impact on, on people that read it or see it, read about it or get into one of these places to uh, see what has happened really.